In today's Strength Coach Tutorials episode, I'm going to show you how to use Excel functions to create a random data set. This is going to be useful if you are starting any sort of athlete monitoring or dashboard project and you need a data set to work with. So let's get after it. Okay, so to get started here, all I've done is gone ahead and outlined some variables that we are going to try to create along the top of the sheet here. The variables that I'm going to show you how to randomly create are athlete name, the dates of the actual values, um, a lift type, a 1RM, a 10 meter sprint, um, and a 10 meter sprint too, because I'm going to show you actually how to calculate that a few different ways. I picked these values because um, they represent um, different types of, of data that you might find in an athlete monitoring project or just any data set that you're working with. Here we're going to have text data in the dates. Obviously, we're going to have dates values. Um, lift type, we're going to have text values again. 1RM, we're going to have integer numbers. And then 10 meter sprints, we're going to have decimal numbers. And I'm going to show you how to create all of those values. And they're all going to be random so that we can create large data sets really easily, which are going to allow us to start to create some of our projects because we'll already have a lot of the data built in before we even collected it. So without further ado, we'll get started on this project. Just a quick reminder though, that if you are enjoying any of the Strength Coach Tutorials videos, if you could like and subscribe to the channel and leave a comment down below, that really helps the channel grow and it helps me dedicate more time towards these videos. Okay, so away we go. So the first thing that we're gonna want to create is an athlete name um, selector or a random value to select the athlete name. Now there's a lot of good functions that Excel has and for this we're going to choose from three names and just for the purposes of this video we'll call them Dave, um, Josh, and Steve. So those are the three names that we're going to select from for our athlete names and those could be any names that we want and we're going to use a couple of functions together. If we were to imagine that these values had the value of one, two, and three what we could do is actually choose a random number between one, two, or three, and then link those right to the, um, the name that it corresponds to. And to do that, we could use a random function and then do an index match and that would work fine. But if we set our formulas up right, we can actually do that all within one formula. So let's try that ran between first. And we've used this in previous videos, but if I were to type in equals rand between, and then I open that up, it's gonna ask me what the bottom number is. In this case, it's gonna be one, and then what the top number is, and that will be three. And then I'll close that off, and when I hit enter, what you'll notice is it is selected two, and if we were doing this properly, we would want that to refer to Josh. So I'm gonna just create a box here, and we're gonna do all of our values within this box. So I'm gonna take this value and just drag it down, and you can see we have three, two, three, 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 et cetera. So now we're gonna wrap a formula in it that's actually gonna make it choose the name that we're looking for. And I use the word choose on purpose because the formula is actually called choose. So right before where we've put ran between, we're gonna use the words choose. And I'm gonna open up a bracket. And the arguments here, it's gonna ask me for the index number. Well, we're already creating that with our random number generator. So I'm gonna put a comma after that. And now it's gonna ask me what I want my values to be. Well, the first one we want is gonna be quotations, Dave, quotations. And then we always put text inside quotations. And then the next one is gonna be comma, quotations, Josh, quotations, comma, quotations, Steve, quotations. And then I'll close off that bracket. And when I hit enter, what you're gonna notice is it's now actually converted that number into a name. And so I'll drag those down and those are all of our values. Now one thing to note because we're using formulas here is that anytime I refresh my values, these are all going to update and I'll show you how to make all of the data static at the end. Now number two, what we wanna do is actually create uh, a random set of dates. So we're going to use that ran between function again, but we're going to mix that with another function again. So this time we're going to type equals rand between, open that up, and it's going to ask me what I want the bottom value to be. In this case, we want it to be a date. So in here, we're going to type in date, D-A-T-E. 
open that up and it's gonna ask me what year I want. So I want 2020 and we'll use the 12th month and the first day and I'm gonna close that off and then I'll hit comma and we're gonna do that one more time for the top value. So we'll go date, open that up, 2020, 12th month, 30th day. Close all of those brackets off. So as you can see, we got ran between date 2020, December 1st, and then the top value is date 2020, December 30th, and I'll hit enter. And what you'll notice is that it's actually gonna give me a date. Now on your screen, what might happen is you might get values that look kind of like this, 44,170, 44,192, and that's just because you are getting date values, but they're not formatted as a date. Okay, so this is how Excel actually reads date values. And if I were to take this column and then go up to my formatting and go to short date, we can convert all of those to dates. Okay, so that's important to note. So that's how you would create random dates. Now let's go to our lift type and we can do the same thing that we actually did over here. So let's type in that formula right from the beginning. So we're gonna hit equals choose and our index number is gonna be random between. Open that up, bottom value will say one, top value will say three, we'll choose from three different lifts. And then it's gonna ask me what our values are. Let's say bench press, squat, and deadlift. And when I close that off, I hit okay, and you can see that it's gonna automatically select all of those values. So that's an easy way to do it. Again, when we're dealing with text values, we can use the choose function to be able to pull those out. Now we're gonna try to pull out um, one RM values, okay? So we can use that ran between function again, equals rand between, and we can just do the top and the bottom values. So maybe our bottom value is 100 kilos and our top value is 400 kilos or pounds or whatever you would like to do and I hit okay. And as I drag my numbers down, you can see that it'll give us those values. Now one thing with these types of numbers is maybe we actually want to round these. So in front of this rand between function, I can use the function called mround, M-R-O-U-N-D. Open that up and our number again is gonna be that rand between um, number. And then I'm gonna hit comma and what is the decimal value that I actually want to round it to? Well, let's say five and I'll close that off. And you can see as I drag this down, now all of our values are gonna be multiples of five, which looks a little bit better for 1RM type values. But you can see that they're still whole numbers. So now we have to figure out a way to make decimal numbers for our 10 meter sprint. And to do this, we're gonna use a function called rand. And we're gonna type equals rand, and then close off the brackets. And when I hit enter, you can see that this is really just gonna give me a bunch of decimal values. But we can use these and turn them into the values that we want. So let's go to the top one here. And in order to get a value between what we're looking for, we have to use um, a formula. So after rand, I'm gonna go multiplied by, which is a star icon, open that up, and I'm gonna type the top value that I want. And because we're dealing in sprint times here, let's make the top value two for two seconds. And we're gonna multiply that, or sorry, subtract the bottom value, which is one. So we got two minus one. And then after that, we're going to add the one back. Okay, so what we're gonna do is basically, if you can think about this value here, we would take this value, multiply it by one, and then add the one back in. So we go top value minus bottom value plus bottom value, hit enter, and I'll drag this down. And now you can see we actually have basically sprint times. So we'll have um, times between one and two seconds, okay? Now, one last thing we might wanna do here is I might wanna round this one again, M round, open that up, and I'll put that all, or sorry, I will put a comma after that, and the multiple I want is perhaps 0 .01, and then I'll close that off, 
and you can see that it's gonna automatically round that to two decimal places, which most laser or stopwatch systems will give us. And then the last um, sprint time that we're gonna use is we're gonna use a random array function. And this one works pretty cool. So we're gonna go, um, I just need to count the rows here quickly. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 rows. So I'm gonna go into this cell here and type equals rand array. And I should note that this function is only available in Excel 365 to my knowledge, but all of the other functions that we've used should work in um, any version of Excel to my knowledge, okay? So for the rand array function, what it's gonna actually ask us for is how many rows of values do we wanna create? In this case, we wanna create 14 rows of values. How many columns of values do we wanna create? Well, we're gonna leave this blank because we only want one column of values. What is the minimum value that we actually want? Well, we want, because it's sprint times, our minimum value would be one, comma, maximum value, two, comma, and then it's gonna ask us whether we want a decimal or an integer value. Well, in this case, since we're dealing with sprint times, we probably want a decimal, so I'm gonna put in false there. And when I put this bracket and hit enter, watch what happens. It actually puts a value in every one of those cells because we told it we wanted 14 rows of values. And every one of them is between two or one and two. So that's a really powerful way to do lots of values all at the same time. And then if I wanted to, again, I could wrap this in an M round function. And at the end, Maybe I want it to be rounded to 0 0.01, close that off, and when I hit enter, it's gonna automatically round all of those values to 0 0.01. So there you go, that's a quick trick on how you can start to create any type of data set that you really want, be it a text-based data set, a date-based data set, another text-based data set, an integer or decimal values, and you would just set your top and bottom parameters um, accordingly, depending on what the actual data set was you were creating. I find this a really helpful tip because if you are trying to create any sort of athlete dashboard or monitoring system and you haven't yet had an opportunity to test your athletes or monitor them, you need some data from which to create all of your visualizations, your analysis and different things. And this is just a quick way that you can create all of the data that you would ever need in just a couple of minutes. So I hope this trick helps you out. And if it did, please smash that like button, hit the bell notification and hit the subscribe. And that really helps the channel out. And if you have any ideas for future videos, you can leave them in the comments or you can reach out to me personally. I'm always looking to try to create sheets to help coaches. So with that being said, I will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.